Welcome back to Let's Play No One Lives Forever. I'm Burning Dog Face, and, uh... I noticed, upon reflection, that lately I haven't been talking about the story of the games I play as much as I used to, and sort of just reacting to what's going on in the moment. Now granted, in this game they tend to give you the story in huge chunks all at once, but, uh... I want to deal with that guy, but I don't have any long-range weapons. Problematic. You know, like, Goodman died, and I never got a chance to talk about that, because there was, like, a six-minute cutscene in the, uh, briefing room after that. Uh... Also wanted to give a shout-out at this moment to Vincer's Prodigy. I asked in that video why uh, Kate didn't just shoot Volkov, since he wasn't standing directly behind Goodman or anything. I'm just going to read this comment. Uh, the idea is that since bullets don't cause instant death unless you hit very specific parts of the body, Volkov would easily kill Goodman before dying himself. And while the player may be able to nail headshots at uh, 15,000 yards in-game, Miss Archer may not have the canonical ability to do so. As for why she runs without shooting Volkov, the writer has wanted his boss fight to be later in the game. That's it, really. Bad writing strikes again. So, uh, thank you for that. But, uh, now... I guess I've got to find a way to deal with this situation. Okay. Nothing of any value in there. Yeah, that would be advisable. Shit. I can't believe that actually worked. That didn't work. Well, shit. You know if that was the auto save or a manual save or uh, you know I'll just quick save now there You know, I was absolutely certain that the game would end with one of two things happening. Either... Paint it on. Goodman would turn out to be the, uh, spy within, uh, Unity's ranks. Or he would, uh... begrudgingly admit that, uh... Where are those guys at?
that's no good either. It's going to see the... Huh. That's right, down here in the dead zone. I'll take that, don't mind if I do. Oh my god, it's right underneath. Look what he's at this thing. Okay, I have to stay up there, so that's problematic. Oh! There's no reason for that room at all. It's just a place for dudes to spawn if I trigger the alarms. That's my prediction. <laughs> hey, Delaney, you got a phone call. Who is it? Sounds like your girlfriend. Uh, tell her I'm out on patrol. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I got better things to do than talk to her. Like what? Like stand here looking at my shoes. I'll see her this weekend, and there won't be any need for talking. And what a romantic. Ain't I sweet? Well, I'm not gonna feel bad if I have to kill that guy. Go ahead and say hi. No one cares. The fuck? Well, now I want to know what's at back at the other place. Man. You know, under the camera with a dead body underneath it. There was a door leading into that building. Amazing. There is armor behind me. Don't mind if I do. Phosphorus rounds. Nutritious and delicious. Part of this complete breakfast. So, didn't you used to work for Evil Alliance? Yeah, for about a week. That bad, eh? You ever heard that saying about the banality of evil? About the Holocaust, yeah. Well, that definitely applies to Evil Alliance. 
Those guys are a bunch of idiots with huge entitlement issues. They really think the world owes them something. That's pretty common in this line of work. No kidding. I mean, I totally understand not wanting to have a legitimate job, but at least be honest about it. Some guys get so self-righteous, like it's okay to be evil because life is hard. Hell with that. Deal with it. Be a man. I always heard good things about Evil Alliance. I know a lot of guys that think they're this great little organization. Yeah, they have this weird credibility in the criminal industry for some reason, but you notice the media doesn't take them seriously at all. I never really thought about it, but you're right. The guy that runs it is a total moron. He's the most conniving, ambivalent little bastard I ever met. One day he's anti-American, the next he loves America and he hates the Germans. Sounds like a real jerk. Sad thing is, those idiots will never realize how insignificant they are. It's kind of ironic. They're irritating because they're stupid, but they're too stupid to realize it, which makes them even more irritating. I don't mind them being stupid. I can tolerate stupid people. I just can't stand smug stupid people. Ah, oh, well, what you gonna do? Ah, you just gotta vent every once in a while, you know? I guess so. Well, I better get back. See ya! You guys worked as henchmen for an evil organization. You know what I can't stand is a hypocrite. Oh hell. I can't go back. And there's a motorcycle there. Okay, nuts to this. Another shout out to uh, Venser's Prodigy, by the way, for uh, fuck me, suggesting that for suggesting that uh, when Kate was doing those coin flips with uh, Agent Goodman. She was uh, using sleight of hand to swap out for coins that only had uh, the face she called. Yeah, guys like that didn't tend to last long. I hate that guy. He's always shooting his mouth off. Hey, that reminds me of a funny story. Back when I was in Korea, this guy got transferred into our unit, green as hell. I mean, he'd never been out of his hometown before. We had guys like that. They didn't tend to last long. Well, this guy didn't know what a sucker uh. he was. He was a loudmouth little bastard, always acting tough and picking fights, scrawny as a pluck chicken, too. So one day we're getting shelled, and this big rock comes clanging down his little Marine's helmet. He takes it personal, right? Gives up and starts cussing and hollering. The lieutenant shouting at him to hug the dirt. But he's just on a roll. Probably figures he can cuss a whole North Korean army into submission. I guess you gotta admire his courage. Stupidity's more like it. Anyway, he's just going on and on and on, and the lieutenant tells me to get the idiot off his feet because he's marking our position for the mortars. So I start crawling over there, yelling at him to give it up, and he starts calling me chicken and saying how scared I am. I hope you knock him on his butt. I was right about to when this rifle round comes zinging along and rips his lower jaw clean off his face. Jeez. He's just staring at me, and I'm staring at him, and all of a sudden I start laughing. I can't stop. I'm just choking on laughter. Of course, he finally figures out he ought to hit the dirt, but now he's bleeding all over and making these pathetic noises. How come you were laughing? Because it was just so perfect. He loves shooting off his mouth, but he wasn't too happy about having it shot up for him. <laughs> it was unreal. What happened to the kid? Oh, he croaked. That's a hell of a story. It's got a good moral, too. Yep, I guess it does. 
I ought to tell Hanson that story. I doubt he'd get it. Guys like that just don't realize what suckers they are. Ah, oh, hell. I didn't like that story very much. I can do better than that. I need to figure out how to get in there and save that prisoner, I guess. There are all these goddamn cameras so high off the ground. Didn't you used to work for Evil Alliance? Yeah, for about a week. That bad, eh? You ever heard that saying about the banality of evil? About the Holocaust, yeah. Well, that definitely applies to Evil Alliance. Those guys are a bunch of idiots with huge entitlement issues. They really think the world owes them something. Whoa! <laughs> That's bad. I once heard about the banality of evil, but it's been so long I don't actually remember. I think it was something about, like, the bureaucracy of, uh, sending six million people to their deaths. After a while, just the scale of it becomes so high that it's hard to even imagine that these be uh, what you're doing is, uh, you know, so terrible. After a while, it's just numbers. Or I might be completely off track with that, and it might have been something else entirely. Boy, I'm sure glad I backtracked over to this spot. But this place smells good, though. I'm hardly the handy type, but I do like the smell of fresh cut wood. Actually, wait. Crap. How could you've done? Oh, my armor. Fine, let's solve this camera problem the old-fashioned way. Oh. I'm holding W right now. Still holding W. You can't back up, incidentally.
Oh, god damn it. God damn, I did terribly that time. What the fuck? Oh! Took him out with my first shot. I'm using. So, didn't you used to work for Evil Alliance? Nope. <laughs> now you never will either. Why would you look at that? It doesn't turn all the way over here. Isn't that convenient? Oh. What the hell? Oh, that's why. Hands are off center again. I can't even get close enough. Oh, finally. Frank, boy, that's a tough one. I hear this head of sanctimonious evil is kind of a nutcase. How much will do they pay? I'd ask for a company car, too. Morton. Damn it. The fact that that makes absolutely no sense means I've uh, already missed another one. I just hope I don't get like a timestamped comment saying it's right here, you idiot, you missed it. Oh, fair enough. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you in the next episode of Let's Play No One Lives Forever. I'm going to continue listening in on henchmen and their horrible stories, and or putting bullets in their heads. Probably and. And we get to ride the bike again. Later!